What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 32 of the tutorial series on Amazon API Gateway tutorial. So I just want you to take note that this is not the tutorial video, but in this video, I will take you through the basic difference between proxy and non-proxy integration. So non-proxy integration is also known as the custom integration, right? So let's get started. So here I have prepared a couple of slides, right? And I will take you through that. So let's get started. So let's try to understand the overall flow of the proxy integration, how it works, right? So for example, we have an end user or any client uh, who is invoking the API endpoint and he will be sending some request data to the API gateway, right? And what API gateway will do is it will simply forward that request data to the backend within proxy integration, right? So here API gateway is not playing any role in any sort of transformation of the request data. It will simply forward that request data to the Lambda function. Now what Lambda function will do is it will analyze the payload. It will fetch the uh, required data from that overall request data. It will execute the business logic. And once that is done, it will finally set the response header, status code, response body, right? And once that is set, it will return that response to the API gateway. Now again, API gateway will not play any role in any sort of uh, setting the status code, response header or response body, right? So no transformation takes place at the API gateway level in terms of response, right? And then finally, API gateway will simply return that data to the end user without any transformation. Now let's have a look at the non-proxy integration flow. Now within non-proxy integration or the custom integration, what happened is that end user invoked the API endpoint with some request data. And now uh, the API gateway is able to transform the request data, right? So API gateway will decide uh, how it want to transform the data based on the mapping templates that we have defined. And once that request data is transformed, it will forward that transformed data to the Lambda function. Now here within Lambda function, it's only going to execute the business logic and it will return the response message, right? So remember uh, here Lambda function will execute the business logic and it will return the response message to the API gateway back, right? Now once the response data is within the API gateway, uh, the API gateway is able to transform the uh, return response and it will set the response header uh, status code, right? And then finally the transformed response will be returned back to the client, right? So this is basically the uh, basic uh, difference between proxy and non-proxy integration. Now moving along. So let's have a look at the difference between the proxy and non-proxy or the custom integration in terms of request response. So let's start with the proxy integration. So here AG is basically the API gateway, right? A short for API gateway. So within proxy integration, API gateway will forward the request data as it is to the backend, right? And API gateway does not play any role in any sort of transformation of the request data. Now, if we look at the second point, then the backend is responsible or the backend will parse the request data and execute the business logic. And finally, the third step or the third point is that response is also purely handled by the Lambda function. Uh, like it will set the uh, error code or the status code along with the headers and the message that it want to return to the end client, right? So here API gateway, as I mentioned, plays as the uh, role of transmitter. Right now, if we look at the non-proxy or the custom integration, then uh, within non-proxy integration, API gateway provides more control to the user uh, over the request or the response data, right? Because uh, we can, or we are able to modify or transform the request and the response data at the API gateway level as we need. Now, if we look at the uh, second point, then API gateway is able to transform the request and response data before sending and receiving to and from uh, Lambda function. And we can also set the uh, status code or the error code that we want to return the headers and the message will be coming from the backend, right? So basically we can set header status code uh, within API gateway. 
and also not to forget that we can also transform the response data before sending it to the end client or the end user right so how we can transform data so for that we need to uh, uh, configure the mapping templates and based on that we should be able to do that now moving along now in terms of setups how proxy integration and the non proxy integration differs let's have a look now as a part of the proxy integration it's really easy to set up and get started request and response is parsed and controlled by the backend right so here we don't need to perform any sort of complex configuration as a part of the api gateway all we need to create the resource and the method and just uh, check the use proxy integration uh, box and have the lambda function in the backend and you are good to go right uh, no major configuration takes place at the api gateway level apart from the resource and the method creation right now uh, most of the things sits in the code so exporting api settings as swagger does not contain much information right so as a part of the proxy integration everything or mostly everything sits uh, as a part of the code base right because the request parsing takes place at the uh, lambda level or the backend level response is configured from the backend or at the lambda level right so nothing is being transformed or, or set up as a part of the api gateway so while we try to export certain settings as a part of the uh, swagger specification then we will not get much of that information from the api gateway right because most of the things sits in the code and basically uh, it is hard to document right now if we look at the custom integration then of course it is complex to set up but uh, it provide more control over the request and the response data along with header status code and more right so here within non proxy integration we need to uh, have certain knowledge of vtl and we need to configure mapping templates and we need to configure the response code response headers anti transformation if required right so that is basically a little complex and as a part of the custom integration settings can be easily exported as the swagger specs and uh, it is easy to document right so this is basically the basic uh, set of difference uh, between proxy and custom integration as a part of this setup now moving along let's look at the advantages so within proxy integration as i mentioned it is really easy to set up and get started and we have basically few function and more business logic uh, as a part of the backend and lambda controls everything that is status code message request and response right and if proper http framework is used then swagger module can be used to document right as a part of the backend now if we look at the non proxy integration or the custom integration obviously it gives you more control over the flow as compared to the proxy integration api gateway or at the api gateway level we will be able to transform request and response as required and settings can be easily exported as a part of the swagger specs or the open api 3.0 specs right and it is basically easy to document now let's have a look at the disadvantages so as a part of the disadvantage within proxy integration code starts to become complex it's because everything sits in the code even if we want to parse the request data it sits in the code if we want to execute the business logic it's in the code even if we want to set the error code or the response or the response message everything sits in the code right so hence it starts to become complex and it is error prone right because uh, when that code starts getting complex uh, a human can make a mistake right so the thorough review will help here and it is basically difficult to document since everything is in the back end uh, uh, it is very minimal at the api gateway level right so and apart from that it is tightly coupled with the back end so these are basically the few advantage that we have or that we carry with the proxy integration now if we look at the non proxy integration of course it is complex to set up since templates need to be configured and knowledge of vtl is essential and we can have the duplicate configuration as a part of the api gateway right so for example if we are creating a resource and the respective method within that and then uh, we have some configuration as a part of the api gateway 
and then we go ahead and create another resource and we have another method and and uh, we configure the same thing or we duplicate the same thing as a part of the another resource right so that's basically uh, some sort of duplicate configuration that can occur at the api gateway level within custom integration so as and when we move with the uh, non proxy or the custom integration it, it becomes uh, uh, api gateway specific right because at some level non proxy integration is tightly coupled with the aws tag but again it depends on the use case so that it can be planned and configured uh, accordingly right now uh, these are the basically basic difference uh, or the basic disadvantage uh, among proxy and the custom integration now moving along so here i am saying it as a conclusion uh, due to lack of the word but these are the few points that i want you to remember right so let's get started so uh, use proxy method for quick prototyping or if you want simple integration so if you don't want to Uh, set up anything complex as a part of the api gateway you want you don't want to configure uh, the mapping templates or the status code or you don't want to transform right then you can simply opt out for the uh, proxy integration uh, for quick and simple integration right now uh, while you want more control over the workflow then go for the non proxy or the uh, custom integration Now, as a third point, uh, configure more at the API gateway level. Hence, it will reduce the complexity at the code level, right? And it will be easy to maintain the code stack. And also, it will be beneficial while you want to export the configuration as a part of the uh, Swagger specs or the Open API 3.0 specs, right? Now, moving along. So, as a next point, uh, use models to define data structure of payload. So, basically, this will simplify your backend logic. so use it often now as a next point avoid using any method and greedy path parameters right so this will uh, add the overhead over the backend that is the code that you have in the backend right because any of the request will come api gateway will simply forward that request to the backend right and backend will decide whether uh, these are the valid parameters or not and this will cause the invocation cost right but it does have some advantage but it's a good idea to avoid any method and the greedy path parameter right so this will also uh, enforce you to define a certain logic for the get method post method put method and this will again uh, increase the complexity of the code at, at at one level right so avoid using any method and greedy path parameters and finally do use request validators Uh, to validate the request data right so these are the few points that i want you to remember so well uh, that's it for this video and as usual if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time